Hey YouTube, David Staples, back with another video. So I just took the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Plus certification the other day and figured I'd share with you a few thoughts on it and uh, go over some of the very basics. Uh, I know that I've talked about some of the other exams that I've taken, such as the Network Plus and Security Plus and the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about the new CSA Plus exam. So the new Cybersecurity Analyst Plus exam uh, is the CS0-001 exam, which you can see right here on the board. So the exam, I know a lot of people tend to have questions about you know, how many questions am I going to see on the exam, uh, what type of questions are they going to be talking about, how much does it cost, uh, how long do I have to take the exam. So uh, as of right now, this is May of 2017. Uh, the exam is currently running $320 according to CompTIA's website that I'm looking at right now. Uh, so the exam actually came out February 15th, 2017. So this being May, it's been out roughly about three months or so now. And on the exam, you're going to have a maximum of 85 questions. Now, that's not to say that you'll get 85 questions. On my exam, I had 75 questions. Uh, but you could very well see 70, you could see 80, you could see 85. So you just never really know exactly how many you're going to get. And for those 85 questions, you do have 165 minutes. So of course, that is two hours and 45 minutes to take the exam. Now, that's a lot of time to go through 85 questions. Uh, I know that it took me a bit over an hour to get through the 75 that I had. Uh, but of course, I've been working with this stuff for quite a bit. So having a little bit more time for the, some of those who may not necessarily be as up to speed on some of these types of things certainly is a very good thing. Uh, I can certainly see where it might actually take some people the full two hours and 45 minutes. So the passing score on this, it is scored on a scale of 100 to 900 and you need a passing score of 750 which is the exact same score that you need on the Security Plus. So if you've already taken the Security Plus that's the exact same score that you need for this new CSA Plus exam from CompTIA. So what types of things are you going to see on the exam? So it looks like there are four objectives for this exam. You have domain 1.0 is threat management, which is 27%. Uh, exam, domain 2 is vulnerability management, and that is 26% of the exam. Uh, domain 3 is the cyber incident response category, and that is 23% of the exam. And then Category 4 or Domain 4 is going to be Security Architecture and Tool Sets. So this new CSA Plus exam is supposed to fall somewhere in between the Security Plus and the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner, or the CASP exam. So this is kind of the in-between type level. So the CASP exam, uh, for those of you who have watched that video, and I'll put a link up here as well uh, for that one, but the CASP exam is more geared towards kind of the advanced level and a lot of business management type practices. Uh, the Security Plus is geared more towards a lot of the uh, underlying technology, just kind of knowing what the basic theory and principle is uh, behind a lot of these types of concepts. Uh, the CSA Plus kind of falls somewhere in between. It's not quite mastery level, it's not quite a foundational level security. Uh, it is one that definitely does require uh, a little bit more in-depth knowledge and perhaps a little bit more practice with some of the types of tools that we might use as a cybersecurity analyst. Uh, some of the things that you might see on the exam will show you uh, maybe some output of log files, some uh, real results from things like a ping sweep or maybe from a port scan. Uh, so if you're familiar with using tools like Nmap and Wireshark, Wireshark and various other types of tools, you should probably do a little bit better on this exam. So you do definitely want to have some experience with some of these tools, perhaps hands-on, uh, but also know what the output results look like from a variety of different types of uh, scanning, from different types of attacks, uh, from various different types of threats that might uh, pose a, a risk to your organization. So CompTIA's recommended experience coming into this exam uh, is to have at least a Network Plus, Security Plus, or equivalent knowledge. Uh, they recommend a minimum of three to four years of hands-on information security or related experience. Uh, so while they don't necessarily require you to have the Security Plus, it's really not a bad idea. So if you're looking at taking the CSA Plus, I would certainly look at going and getting your uh, Security Plus first and then work on the CSA Plus exam.
So what are some of the types of things that we'll see in these various different domains? So let's look at these. So domain one is threat management. So it's going to include things like OS fingerprinting. It's going to include things like packet capture, log reviews. There's definitely going to be some things on the exam that you're going to see in regards to reviewing logs. Just like we've seen on some of the other exams, like the CAST and the Security Plus, you very well could see the output of some logs that you need to be able to analyze. Uh, you also need to be familiar with things like IPS and IDS systems and HIDs and NIDs, the host intrusion detection systems and network intrusion protection systems or prevention systems. Uh, we've also got different things like wireless versus wired networks. You need to be familiar with various different types of attacks that might occur there. Uh, you need to be familiar with certain terms like SIEM, S -I -E -M, the Security and Information Event Management. Uh, you need to be familiar with packet analyzers. Uh, you need to be familiar with uh, you need to be familiar with the term jump box. So if you're not sure what a jump box is, you might want to go do some reading on that. Uh, we need to be looking at things like network access control and ACLs, access control lists. Uh, you need to be familiar with penetration testing. Uh, looking at domain two, vulnerability management, uh, it gets into a lot of the various different terms such as MOUs, the Memorandum of Understanding, SLAs, service level agreements. Uh, you've got various different vulnerability type tests there as well. Uh, we look at things like risk and risk prioritization. Uh, getting into Domain 3, we've got uh, cyber incident response, looking at uh, keeping data that should be confidential, actually confidential. Uh, you need to know some of the standard terms such as HIPAA and PCI. Uh, we've got things like Zero Day, you definitely need to be familiar with Zero Day, uh, as well as APT, the Advanced Persistent Threats. Uh, you need to be familiar with uh, various different types of communication within the organization and technical uh, roles and various different uh, types of controls there. Uh, we also need to be familiar with things like permissions and patching systems, uh, segmenting different systems from uh, other parts of the network, uh, sanitization, secure disposal of assets, uh, all definitely very important pieces that you could very well see on your exam. Uh, domain 4 again is getting into security architecture and tool sets. Uh, so you definitely want to be familiar with things like NIST and uh, ISO and COBIT, uh, TOGAF, ITIL. If you're not familiar with ITIL, I would definitely be familiar with ITIL. That will definitely help you in the world of CompTIA tests. There are a lot of similarities between the ITIL world and the CompTIA world. And of course, I do have practice questions for the ITIL exam as well as some videos on that as well. So feel free to check those out uh, as you're browsing through my channel. Uh, so getting more into Domain 4, we look at things like RADIUS and TACAX, TACAX Plus, uh, various directory services. Of course, Active Directory plays a very big part in that. Uh, we need to know some different types of exploits, such as impersonation and man-in-the-middle attacks, uh, what rootkits are. I would definitely expect to see some things along those lines on the exam. Uh, looking at things, again, logs. We've got firewall logs. We've got sys logs. Uh, we need to make sure that we understand a lot of the concepts when it comes to personnel training and processes and technologies. Uh, we also need to know uh, various different best practices. Uh, so you want to be familiar with things like OWASP, O-W-A-S-P, uh, the Center for Internet Security. You need to be familiar with uh, code analysis and fuzzing, uh, code review, input validation, uh, all definitely going to be very, very important when it comes to this particular exam. Burp suite. Uh, so various different tools will come in handy as well. Uh, so again, there's a lot of things that you need to review for the Cybersecurity Analyst Plus exam from CompTIA. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you're looking for training, feel free to reach out to me and send me a message. I can put you in touch with our salespeople here uh, that can get you enrolled in one of our CSA Plus courses. Uh, I'd be happy to talk through a lot more of the details with you here. Obviously, I can't cover everything in a 10 or 15 minute video. Uh, but just wanted to kind of give you guys an overview of what you can expect, uh, how much the exam costs, how many questions, how long they give you for the exam, and uh, so just some of the basics that you'll expect to see on that exam. So if you've got any questions, uh, again, I did just take the exam two days ago, passed well into the 800s, so uh, not a perfect score, but I, I got as close as I could possibly get. Uh, but uh, So I'm happy to share you know, what I can share. Obviously there's a level of confidentiality for the exam that I can't just go giving you the exact questions that I saw. Uh, but I'm happy to discuss you know, answers to uh, any sort of questions that you might have regarding some of the technologies or some of the underlying concepts, the objectives that are on the exam, and uh, make sure that you guys do as well as you possibly can. And by the way, I'll put some resources that you might be able to use to study for this exam down in the description below, so be sure to check those out as well. 
So certainly appreciate you watching this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below and also click on that little subscribe button down here and click on that little like or thumbs up button. So we'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.